What is up, guys and gals? So, kicking this off here with the pilot episode. The reason I'm kind of starting this channel is because I feel like I have a lot of friends and a lot of people around that really don't know a lot about finance for a lot of different reasons. So, my goal is to kind of make these videos shorter, kind of educate people, and we'll just run with it. So, this first video is going to be about why millennials really aren't ready for the next recession. I saw this article on Investopedia the other day. And I thought it was kind of interesting. So I'm like, why not start it off with that, right? Millennial finance, like, let's roll with it. So the main reason that I personally don't think millennials are ready for the next recession is because they just will not be able to handle the volatility of the market. So in 2008 and 2009, when the last real financial crisis occurred, the S&P 500 fell to 600 and it is somewhere, I have one of these, I think it's in this one, uh, $676.53. So that is a very big drop. It fell, like, I believe it was, there it is right there, over 38%, as you guys can see. And since then, we've been in the 10-year bull market. So it's risen over 400%. And as you can see right here, it's over 2800 which is absurd here's where that was right here the big dip and we are up since then so what i feel like is going to happen with millennials is they're going to they're going to see the price drop and they're going to panic and they're going to sell off and they're going to realize their loss as opposed to just hanging on and i guess essentially admitting the game's over in the first quarter and just take losing their money and it's just not smart it's not ideal so what you should do is, if you're a millennial, or really anyone, assuming you're not retiring like anytime sooner, you shouldn't be investing this money in the market, I feel, is look at the stocks as a Black Friday sale. Consider buying, not selling. And remember that the market will go back up. And also keep in consideration that over the past 100 years, the S&P 500 has averaged a 7% return, which includes 2008, the recession. So clearly it has a history of going back up. So I have a couple of examples that I'm going to run through with you guys. So we're going to have three different people and we're going to use the ESPY stock for this one, just the ETF. So on 10.107, let's see, I wish I didn't X that out. Here we go. So where are we? May, June, October. Here we go. All right. So, October 1st, 2007, the SP 500, or at the SPY, excuse me, was worth $154.65. So, we're going to say person one bought 65 shares of that, which comes to $10,000, $10,052.25. So, you invested about 10 grand in, in SPY. And let's say you bought it in 07 and it tanked. And on February 1st, you were like, I can't do it anymore. I just don't want to do it. I can't see my portfolio going down anymore. So you sell. You sell it off and you take a realized loss of $5,246.80. So you're out. You never come back. That's person one. Loses the money. Person two, we're going to say just the same thing. He bought 65 shares at $154.65. Again, ten about 10 grand invested. and he held after to one, February 1st when it was at that about $74 price range. With the SPY stock worth, as you can see right here, over $281 today, his portfolio would be worth $18,285.15. So he's almost doubled his investment from that time just by holding it and not doing anything. Again, this doesn't include dividends, so it probably, it probably, it would be worth even more than this. And person three, and this is what I would do. So say again, bought 65 shares at about $155, 10 grand. Instead, he didn't just hold, he didn't sell, but instead this person bought an additional 65 shares at about $74. And that comes to $4,805.45. So he's invested almost 15 grand. His total invest actually comes to $14,857.70. And let's say he holds from February 9th 
2009 all the way until today. His portfolio would be worth $36,570.30 just by investing additional money. And there's all my reminders that I need to go to. Just by investing that money into the market and just rolling with it. So he's almost, he's well over doubled his portfolio just by simply riding the train, like riding it out. Now, including dividends, this is an estimate, but we will go, did I exit out? I did exit out, so I will look it back up because I did, that's what I exited out earlier. Dividends 2018. This is what I want. So these dividends are paid quarterly, so every three months, and this is what each share of the SPY stock paid in 2018. So I actually did out the math. So for this quarter right here, the first quarter of 2018, that's that person three with 130 shares would have been paid out $175.52. For this one, he would have been paid out $161.98. For the third quarter, he would have been paid out $171.99. And for the fourth quarter, he would have been paid out $186.55, which comes to a grand total of $696.04. Again, SPY pay is about a 2% dividend, so that's what that comes out to. But that's really what it comes down to. Just don't be afraid to hold. Tell yourself it's going to be okay. Go ahead and look up an article about why it's not going to just tank and you're never going to see your money again. Again, this is for indexes. Individual stocks are a completely different story. Indexes are really, really different for a lot of different reasons, but that is what it comes down to. And that concludes this pilot episode and we will be back soon. Bye-bye.